Welcome to Scheffler DTM talk and welcome Alex here home in Misano on the racetrack. You weren't just a DTM guest driver last year, you really performed some magic. It was just another proof of your irrepressible passion for motorsport. So tell me, how was it possible to stop you from just getting into a race car again? Well, thank you, for, <laughs> of course, for presenting my, my adventure last year in the way you did. Uh, it was tremendous to have the opportunity and then on top, you know, to finish fifth after such a strange race because of uh, the weather condition, which changed uh, many times along the course of the event. So yeah, it would be, you know, fantastic to have another opportunity. To a certain degree, I was hoping it would be today, but I'm only here as a spectator. Uh, the highlight of my day is to be here sitting next to you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm a young boy, so who knows? Maybe down the road I will have another opportunity to drive uh, not only a beautiful race car, but maybe a DTM machine. I'm sure about that one. Um, you said in an interview last year, in my opinion, the DTM is currently the best and most exciting motorsport series in the world, ahead of Formula One. Wow, that's a clear statement. Uh, why do you think so? Well, I have to rephrase that a little, <laughs> in the sense that, of course, Formula One is fantastic, it's fascinating. Uh, but the game is quite predictable at times because it's pretty clear that at the moment there are two teams like Mercedes and Ferrari who are kind of unbeatable from everybody else, whether in this field uh, the level is incredibly high, all the drivers are top class and, you know, BMW, Audi, Aston Martin, you name them, they have machines equally well prepared. Uh, the cars are fascinating, they are beautiful, technologically uh, developed machines. Um, so, and the game, it's, it, it's so, uh, um, you know, competitive. The, 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 the performance very often is measured in thousands of a second. And this means that every race, uh, you may have a guy winning that the following event, it's last in the grid, only because it's you know, he didn't find a way to get the last edge on, on, on out of his, of his car and uh, he lost maybe a couple of tenths and this means often, you know, losing a lot of places in the grid. So uh, the, the, the races are always quite unpredictable. Of course, sometimes it's frustrating for the drivers, but most of the time it's very enjoyable for the people watching. So you love the fights, that's obvious. Um, when you're walking around here, there are a lot of people coming to you say, hey, can we take a picture or selfie or something else? When you see how incredibly popular you are here and how well you handle a BMW race car last year, um, to be honest, I know you love challenges. Wouldn't be a regular start in a DTM be that thing for you? Well, you know, they recognize me be just because I've been around a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but besides kidding, yeah, on one end it would be cool, but on the other end, you know, I'm, uh, I have to remind myself, uh, my age, the fact that uh, the real privilege uh, through the course of my life was to, to fit together, to fit into it many different experiences, one of which is paracycling. I care a lot about it. Uh, I want to go to Tokyo next year to the Olympic Games. So I got a lot of things in my agenda already set and it would be a little too much probably to, to couple that all with a full time, uh, you know, engagement in, uh, in, in the season in DTM. Uh, but if you ask me, Alex, would you be interested in driving again the BMW M4 as a guest driver down the road? I would probably say it's like to, get, to ask a cat whether he likes the mouse. <laughs> All right, maybe there are some people from BMW watching that. Maybe you, there's another chance for you. Um, speaking about this incredible will from you, because you, you just jumped into a race car two years after your accident. Where does your incredible will come from? I understand the question, but in reality, um, you know, it's just a question of staying curious, which is not easy at times, because when you go through something which is difficult, not to say to overcome, a, 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 you know, something quite dramatical, which looked to be dramatical at the time, but then for whatever happens in life, uh, there's always uh, the other side of the coin where nothing is always completely bad or completely good. So you have to take advantage of whatever 
good comes out of what happens and try to serve what happens in order to turn it down the road into an opportunity. And all the things that I'm doing these days are basically related to my new condition, proving that I was able to turn what happened to me into probably the greatest opportunity of my life. Maybe the difference between a lot of people and some optimists like I am, it's simply that you know people like me are capable of forecasting this from the very beginning uh, to see that this, yes, it is possible. Uh, so only it takes is to put yourself at work. And you cannot solve all the problems in one night, but you can do every day one thing which will serve you a step forward and a new starting point for the following day. So step after step, you may get down to the horizon you're chasing, ended up you know, embracing once more some new and fantastic adventures like driving a DTM machine, uh, you know, representing BMW to the best of my ability as a brand ambassador and going to the Paralympic Games, which is, uh, you know, fantastic. If somebody would have forecast this to me a few years ago, being only a race car driver, I would have asked my, you know, this guy, hey, what have you sniffed? I'm a race car <laughs> driver. I got nothing to do with the Olympic Games. But this is basically proving that life uh, in general has a brighter fantasy that we have. And sometimes we have to accept what she decides for us. And again, as I said, try to serve what happens in order to, to you know, to turn it around into an opportunity. Embracing life, embracing opportunities. Um, there are some questions in our lives which are, am I smart enough? Am I pretty enough? Am I strong enough? These are questions people ask themselves when they want to prove something to the world. And I mean, for race drivers, it would be, am I fast enough? Um, when you start at race, uh, racings like last year DTM or this year Daytona, are these questions which come into your mind or do you think to on a completely different level? Uh, no but not because you've never asked yourself this. I used to ask this uh, a lot, and then I learned that nobody is fast enough to complete and to achieve what you really want just with speed. You have to work hard, you have to complete the performance with dedication, attention to details, preparation, and on Sunday afternoon, you're just as good as the level of the preparation you have displayed up to that point was. So. Life is a beautiful adventure in which you just need to try your best, accepting the idea that uh, the best driver in the world simply does not exist. You can be as good as you have prepared yourself that day and as good as the car you're driving is. Um, and, uh, you know, also as human beings, uh, often we are asked to, to challenge different things, to overcome adversity, and again, no one is perfect, no one is totally invulnerable, but you can try to protect yourself uh, and reorganize things in the best way you can. Uh, also, you can try to look around and see who can help you, you know, to achieve what you have in mind, form a team around yourself. And, uh, well, I guess sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but once that you have learned that it happened once, you know, you're very anxious to put yourself at work and try again the same exercise. You say there's not the best race driver in the world, but you're an athlete who um, achieved a lot of things. So you, you've driven in Formula One, uh, celebrated numerous race wins, you won Paralympic gold four times and several world champion titles on hand bikes. So what is the most important success to you and which one was most difficult to achieve? Luckily, I mean, if I have to pick uh, a sportive result that I was able to collect for the course of my career, uh, I would have to think because uh, as you... <laughs> there are so many. <laughs> yeah, as you said, I, I, I happen, you know, to, to, to enjoy several Sunday afternoon of glories through the course of my racing career, but it's also been a very long one. And uh, this, again, is the real privilege, the fact that I've been able to turn my passions into a profession, which is a big, big privilege. Uh, maybe, I don't know, there's no real uh, 
days or satisfactions which stands above all like wow the best one actually all these moments were special but to a certain degree kind of expected i knew that i was gonna build my day of glory that day and so when i crossed the line i was happy but i wasn't surprised as i happened to be in other situation uh, during my life i remember for instance you know, people keep approaching me and telling me how good I am, how strong I am. And yes, for sure, I displayed some strength uh, through what I had to do, uh, especially through the course of my rehabilitation. But so did many other, you know. Uh, but maybe one day was more important, the compliment I received from my nephew. I play with them, with my son, with the kids all day and uh, in the night. He went to bed and he told his dad, Dad, you know, when I grow up, I want to do two things. One is to drive a race car, and two, I want to be, I want to lose my legs like Uncle Alex. <laughs> like, you know, in his mind, that was the secret of my, of being cool, you know, <laughs> the fact that I was so funny, such an enjoyable uncle, you know, to hang around with. And that, to, to me, was the greatest compliment I've ever received. And, uh, yeah. I'll answer this way your question. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're living your life on a completely different level. Maybe it was because your biggest victory was far away from the racetrack. It was um, your victory over death in the hospital in Berlin. What kind of goals do you have in life and which impact do you want to make? Well, first of all, I should collect my German passport because I only have German <laughs> blood in my veins <laughs> when I reach uh, uh, the Ofen Krankenhaus Hospital in Berlin. I was basically dead and they filled me up with German blood, which is the only thing they had available at the time, but was a very good one. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, now I like beer, whether before I didn't like uh, the taste of the beer. So it has a lot to do with, uh, with the German blood, I believe. But uh, beside kidding, um, you know, I live uh, ironically because uh, it looks like from the outside, I may look like a guy who plans things, who really does his best to, to make something happen. In reality, as I said, I, I, I try to take advantage of the opportunities I have. I have a beautiful family. I'm a very happy man because I do represent BMW as a brand ambassador. And sometimes, you know, in Munich, they also remember that I can steer the wheel of a race car quite well. So they give me a car to drive. And I hope this will happen quite soon because uh, you know, paracycling, I can organize this on my own, but uh, drive a race car, I need, I need to be helped. Uh, so here I am as a spectator to cheer my mates this weekend. And uh, maybe down the road, as I said, I'll have a taste of uh, the BMW M4 DTM car again. And uh, we'll see. <laughs>